Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, kingdom now and forever. Let's just have this over the way. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Well, what a morning. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the men who are now reminded of the journey that's taken them to get where they are. Alice has been here from Campbell. It's been kicked away from his family until Father's Day. Did they give you presents before you left? Well, you're just excited to go home then, aren't you? Wait till they give you the cardboard tie. That's the great one. Uh, and we welcome Robin back. It's lovely to see you, Robin. And uh, hopefully you'll not be shocked by being back here and know nothing's changed. Uh, and Jenny. Jennifer's at the back. Yeah, lovely. Oh, it's Billy and Eddie. Oh, it's just getting better. Father's Day is a great reward and better. So it's a great day to celebrate. So what am I going to do on Father's Day? I'm going to talk about authority. <laughs> <laughs> that just killed the whole mood. Where two or three are gathered in my name, says the Lord, I am there among them. Let us begin by bringing our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us rejoice and worship in the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father. We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are sitting at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You are like the most high to Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the colic prayer for this Sunday. Go before us, O, God, o Lord, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbour. Having taken into account the number of people there are, you are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect, and you must take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month, when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. 
Then they had to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. That same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals. I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a fest festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 149, which can be found on a piece of paper in the pew sheet. Let us say it together. O oh, praise the Lord and sing to the Lord a new song. O oh, praise him in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise him in the dead. And sing his praise with him will land the heart. For the Lord takes the life in his people. He and the beast of the ocean. Let his faithful ones exult in his glory. Let them sing for joy upon their beds. Let the high grace of God be in their mouths and the two edged sword in their hands. Do as you avenges on the nations. And chastisement upon the peoples, to bind their kings in chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, to visit upon them the judgment that is decreed. Such honor belongs to all his faithful servants. Praise the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment upon themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, 
it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them if you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honour, then honour. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilment of the law. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Gradual hymn is hymn seventy two. <laughs> Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, beginning at the 10th verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Do you think, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, 
Will he not leave the 99 on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered the all? And there he finds him. Truly, I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the 99 that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. If your brother or sister sins, go and point it out to them, to their faults, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan for a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you that if two or you on earth agree about anything they ask or for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips, the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God and Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Today's readings are a bit controversial, personally. Uh, we see this first reading in the gospel where Jesus is Firstly, talking about saving the lost sheep. And then he goes on to how to deal with people, your brothers or sisters, should they go astray. And it seems like, in some ways, we could interpret the scriptures in such a way that we could justify any behaviour. So if we just took the last part of that reading about how to deal with someone in the church who has gone astray, we could actually say, it, I'm justified to go to someone and tell them that they're a lousy human being because I'm trying to correct them, make them good Christians. If I tell everyone in the church I'm a good person because I'm, I'm trying to get this person to be a good Christian. At times, people justify their behaviour by a certain ideal or belief and think that because they believe they're fulfilling what they've been asked to do, that justifies their behaviour. One of the things I think that's important in understanding the readings today is love. The centre of all authority in the church, in our lives, is love. So when Jesus talks about how to deal with the parishioner or the person, or a brother and sister in Christ, it is out of love not out of judgment. Oh, look at that person. He's taking money from those people. What a lousy person. I need to correct his behaviour because he's doing the wrong thing. Now, the focus is their behaviour. There's no love involved. I've judged their behaviour and I've decided I have a right now to do about build their behaviour in any way I see fit. But in love, if the focus is on the person and their relationship with God, then the focus is different. If that person is stealing, their relationship with God is at risk. What I seek to achieve is not to stop them from stealing. I seek to help them find their relationship with God. Because I love them. Because I care about their immortal soul. I don't want them to lose that relationship. So when Jesus says the first thing you do is you try to do it quietly. 
Now, here we have an outline of how to deal in love with our brothers and sisters. I don't think anybody actually achieves this because nobody feels that they really want to get involved. But should we choose to get involved? And again, the reason I think we don't get involved is because we're afraid that we may be abused, criticised, insulted. And because we don't want to get attacked or abused and criticised, we avoid getting involved, which again is also wrong. Out of love, I go to my brother and my sister and say, look, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about your relationship with God. I'm concerned that the things you're choosing to do are damaging. Now, if they sit there and say, yeah, okay, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. Have a great day. But they keep doing it. Because their immortal soul is so important to us, we then find others who say, we've noticed this person is losing their faith. They're not, let's go and talk to them in a couple. See, I'm not the only person who believes this. We go and they still say, thank you, that's great. But they continue to do it. We do it as a community. We as a community, we've talked, we would like to tell you that we love you and we would like you to know that we don't think what you're doing is right. At this point is where the focus changes from the one to the 99. Whenever we allow something to go into our church, which is not good for our church, we are not just allowing that person to continue to do something inappropriate. We are setting a standard that says it's all right then to do these things. And we leave a doorway for others in the church to therefore start doing the same thing or to justify that they then can go off and do what they want to do if this guy can stay in the church and do what they do. What we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. What we bind on earth, we bind in heaven. So if we give pick to choose to live under God's authority of love, we can love a person we still have to know when to cut them loose because their loving them is dangerous to our, our faith and our eternal souls. We go then to look at Paul's letter, which is again about authority, but this time it's about a secular authority. And I don't know about you, but as I heard it, I'm sitting there going, how can Paul say this? I mean, we know countries where the powers and authority use their power and authority to oppress their people, to steal from them. How can Paul say that God ordained those authorities? Even the thought that God ordained them to punish. So he's given a bad government to a country because they deserve a bad government because they've been bad and he wants to now rectify their behaviour by punishing them with a bad authority. It sounds valuable for some Christians, but it still sounds appalling, appalling to my idea of what God's about. If God does it that way, I definitely need explanations. The way I see it is, firstly, Paul didn't live under a totally just Government. I mean, he was uh, arrested, he was held in uh, prison for two years, under house arrest basically for two years, because they didn't want to deal with his uh, problem, so they just ignored him and just left him alone and in, prison, uh, in house arrest for two years. He was beaten by one group and then told to leave the city because he told them they were a Roman citizen and they didn't want to get in trouble, so they said, could you leave quietly? He said, no, you've beaten me and I'm a Roman citizen. Now you have to deal with the consequences. So he was mistreated under the law, and even Jesus himself, the law was used to crucify him. So we're not looking at a person who didn't know that there was unjust uses of the law. But Paul believed that law itself was just, and on the whole, authority is just that even if they do it badly their aim and intent is to do what is right so when i look at the government and i sit there and say they're doing a lousy job 
what allows a group of people. One thing I always try to remember is I like to believe that on the whole, the government is trying to do what is right by the people. That on the whole, the police force is aimed to keep peace and bring justice. Therefore, my responsibility is to live in accordance with that aim to bring peace and justice, even if the people who are inflicting it at times are not. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't had any major run-ins with the police. I don't go looking for them, but I haven't come looking for me either. Why? Because on the whole, I try to live a life in accordance with the law. I don't give them reason to come seek me out. I try not to speed. I use the word try because I'm not always successful. And at times the police catch me. And I pay the consequence of my choices. In what Paul is saying, I believe, is not just about social authority though. In my belief, Paul is talking about how we live our lives no matter what the government's like. So whether the government's good or bad, whether they're doing it well, whether the police are totally corrupt or whether they're not, is irrelevant to our behaviour. We do not act because the person next door is doing the right thing or the wrong thing. We choose to act and behave according to the authority that we live under. And at the end of the day, the authority that we live under is God. So if God tells me that I've got to love my neighbour, then I go out to love my neighbour, regardless of how my neighbour loves me. I try to bring to society that which, in, a, in the end, for me, the humanity is trying to achieve. And that is humanity is trying to achieve what God wants. So human laws are only a reflection of what God wants for us. They are not opposed. So being the image of God, we know what justice is. We know what good and right looks like. And we are going to try and achieve it, even if we don't believe in God because it's in part of our makeup, it's part of God, it's part of us. Paul says, accept civil authority as a reflection of God's authority, live in total obedience to God's authority. Okay, so authority is not about power. Authority is about engaging with God. It's about engaging with what it is to be human and the image of God and to live it out in love. If we portray a negative view of authority, then we have the right to oppose it and to denounce it and it justifies any behaviour that we take. We can destroy things, we can hurt people, we can do whatever we like because we are doing what is right and therefore we are justified. But if we deal with something in love, then any action we take is only a destroying of that love to hurt someone, to destroy them, to destroy property is not love. How do we use our authority? Out of love, out of vengeance, out of justification for our emotions and our feelings, or out of a sense of loving those who are giving up their souls for the sake of something they think is going to get them something better in this world. We need to keep our focus on our eternal life and realize the eternal life of each other is far more important than this human life. I can care about where you're going to live, where you're going to retire, but where you go after you die is far more important to me than where you are right now. And I'll do anything I can to ensure that 
you go where you want to go in the return lot as much as where you are now. <coughs> Amen. We come now as a community to reaffirm who this God we worship is. The love that he showed, let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the heart. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became true to you. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who is the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified? Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the world, the church, and for ourselves. At the end of each prayer, I will say, and it can be found on the back of the pew sheet under the intercession response, loving God in your mercy. The response is here, our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks that you have created a world of rich beauty and diversity. Hear our prayers for all the peoples of the earth We pray for those whose lands are invaded and whose homes are destroyed. For those who suffer from starvation and disease. For leaders of tribes and nations and for all who govern. Open our eyes to recognise you among us in your little ones who are hungry and homeless. Loving God in your mercy. Yeah. We give you thanks that you have revealed yourself to us in your son. Hear our prayers for your church, its clergy and people. We pray for places where your church has lost its vision, for places where your church has strayed from your teaching, for all priests and pastors and those responsible for the church's resources. We bring our parish prayer to God. Renew in us, O oh God, the zeal for your love. 
Let our parish come alive with the power of your spirit. Where we have failed, forgive us. Where we have persevered, encourage us. Where we are in doubt, direct us. Help us to see new opportunities for witness and service for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Open our eyes to recognise you among us, wherever two or three are gathered in your name. Loving God, in your mercy, we give you thanks that you teach us the ways of forgiveness and reconciliation. Hear our prayers for the people of this community. We pray for those who have been made redundant and those who cannot find work. For those whose needs are ignored and those who cannot care for themselves. For ourselves and each other. For our families and our friends. Lord, we give a special prayer for fathers today. For those who struggle to be fathers. For those who have blessed lives by their guidance and their directions. May all children see their fair fathers for who they are to respect their gift of life and their efforts to be fathers. Open our eyes to recognise you among us in your little ones who are forgotten and despairing. Loving God in your mercy, we give you thanks that you heal the sick and go in search of those who have lost their way. Hear our prayers for all who are in need. We pray for those whose lives are ruled by addiction to alcohol, drugs or gambling. For the broken hearted and those who have lost all purpose in life. For the sick and the dying and all who minister to them. We pray today for our family and friends who are suffering. We bring prayers for Suzanne, Robin, Michael Hirschfeld, Ursula Poiser, Anne Howe, Baby Odin, Peter Tranter, Jill Daniels, Brett, Bill Henderson, Damien Vale, Patricia McMullen, Kenneth Cordovan, Wendy Lindsay, and Oliver. Open our eyes to recognise you among us in your little ones who are sick and suffering. Loving God in your mercy. Yeah. We give you thanks that you rejoice to bring home all your sons and daughters. We remember all who have died in your love. give thanks for those who have disclosed your love to us, for those whose yearly remembrance fall at this time. For William Sutherland, Ethel Manette, Layla McNeish, Colin Coates, Howard, Harold Howes, Joyce Aldridge, Peter Aldridge, Bess Baines, Arthur Westbrook, Mary Goulet, George Wade, 
Muriel Michelson. Help us to live so others will recognize you in our midst that with the angels and saints and all your little ones, we may come to see your face in heaven. Loving God in your mercy, yeah. accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. <coughs> our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our sins, as we give those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Jesus said a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Let us prepare for our confession through the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of one of the But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the end of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be outstanding for the greeting of peace. Now, this is the love feast part of the service. Everybody's found God. Everybody's feeling loved and high ready to share it out. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace and love of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Our offertory hymn is in four of the offertory plate is in the aisle. If you haven't given your uh, offertory, you actually have to come and put it in personally at the front. Uh, and for those who have uh, never had communion here, we now come up the aisle. There is hand sanitizer. Do not come to me with uh, sanitized hands more for your health than for my mine. So when you uh, come forward, put it on and wait until your hands are dry and then come forward. And then you go off to the to the right, my right, your left, and there's hand sanitizer there again for you to hand sanitize after you've taken communion. Okay, our offertory is in 419.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is we right. We like to give our thanks and praise. All glory and honour be yours. All ways and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God. Give you thanks and praise. For your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who, by the power of your Spirit, was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated, kneel, or stand, depending on what your worship requires. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. And we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit that we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore we do, as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, 
in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power are yours forever and ever. As this broken bread was once many grains which have been gathered together and made one bread, so may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us. And feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. 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 <coughs> Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. <laughs> God be with you and Jesus guide you the spirit be with peace, love and happiness now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The blood of Christ keep you all in eternal life.
we're doing is D, you know, the service booklet. D has its own response. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us in this hope that we have for us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Uh, thank you all for coming in, especially for the fathers. I hope you have a special Father's Day. Um, if your children don't get you what you want, don't remember guilt is a good thing at times. Uh, I also want to run, tell the gentlemen, 7 o'clock next Saturday at St John's Hall for men's breakfast, 7 a.m. next Saturday morning. Uh, anyone is welcome? No, I guess that means that you're a man. Um, and uh, it was lovely to see all you lovely faces, I tell you. Alistair, good luck. Had a lovely time up here. Um, you may not want to go home. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> For many reasons, I can tell you now. Uh, and uh, please be upstanding for the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We recession, our recession in 84.